Wheelan, New Hampshire is known for the former paper mills, mountainous beauty, and their own language, mainly thanks to residents growing up with both English and French culture. My dad actually immigrated from Canada when he was five, and his family went to Laconia and then to Berlin, and they found a really vibrant French-speaking Franco-American community there. Rochelle Bodwin is a Berlin native, and when she realized there were so many unique words here, she asked people to submit ideas and put them into something called the Berlin Dictionary to help interpret for those not from around here. If I use the word aunt in Berlin, I don't know that, that people would quite understand what you're saying. So we would say aren't most of the time, actually, or matant is another word we would say. What if I were to play a game called bingo? Um, most folks would call that bino. Um, yeah, and that would be a pretty, pretty raging social event, I think. But what if I'm in my house and I want to turn the lights off? How would you say that? Well, you would say close the lights. <laughs> To help open our minds to Berlinese, the dictionary includes visuals like pea shoes or knitted slippers, meat pie, a classic your mamere might make, or something called boom piers, those rock formations in the Androscoggin River that harken back to the paper mill days. The mill workers could stand on them and push the logs down the river. Um, so that they could get to the mills when they used to float the logs. And in Berlin, if those logs became two by fours, it might be called... Yeah, in Berlin, they might call it a four by twice, which is also kind of that French word order situation or um, side by each might be a way to stand up in line. And I'm trying to push for it to be a way to talk about ATVs that seat four people. That's why I think, I think we should just start calling those side by eaches. We don't notice, but much of our everyday language is only spoken around these parts. If you use phrases like these, I might say, so don't I. Um, I guess that's not grammatically correct, but it's just, it's so ingrained to what I've said and have always said, so don't I. You, you think it's a nice day, so don't I. Jen Buteau is also a Berlin native and wrote about the way people all across New Hampshire speak. For example, drawer versus draw. Or, you know, maybe you fold your sweaters and put them in the draw. No? Like as a drawing with a pencil? Yeah, like draw. <laughs> like with the poles and the bureau. Isn't that a drawer? A draw, yeah. We all know this metallic kitchen staple, but what do you call it? I never knew that people called it anything else but tinfoil. Many grow up eating peanut butter and jelly, but around New Hampshire, it could also have been a fluffer nutter. In our brown paper bag, we had on white bread, peanut butter, and fluff, um, also known as marshmallow cream. And if you missed your turn on a road in New Hampshire, locals might have a solution. We don't have a lot of roundabouts or even traffic lights, but you could just, you know, bang a Yui. Of course, expressions have been around for generations. But what about new phrases? You know, the stuff kids use. We sought out a teen to English dictionary in the form of Moulton Borough teacher Ron Kaiser. And I cannot believe how much language you know, among teenagers has changed since the pandemic started. I literally have a notepad at the front of my room and I'm just writing it down. I'm doing more work than they are sometimes. I'm trying to learn their language. Not surprising, Ron is a prolific writer. He's had enough wacky stories to make it into Chicken Soup for the Soul 17 times. You could say this English teacher really gets into language. Hecate's appearance represents a turning point in Macbeth. She has decided the witches have gone too far. Yep, during the pandemic, he dressed as a knight for his Zoom classes. Sir Kaiser was the perfect vassal 
to help us learn what your teen is actually saying. They love the word vibe. You know, they've turned it into a verb. Like right now, you and I, Sean, we're vibing. We're vibing? Right? We're vibing. Is that is that good? Yeah, it's okay. great. Oh, great, okay. Yeah, just hanging out is vibing. They shorten everything. Like right now, we're collabing. We're vibing and collabing at the same time? We are, we're talented. As we ventured further into the teenage brain, I learned words like bussin, gas, and swelligant are positive ways to describe something. In fact, there's lots of ways kids give a compliment. If Kevin Skroop were here, they, the roop is what we call him around here, you know, Kevin, your tie is poggers. And Aaron Thalou, you know what? That dress is mint. Ray Brewer, that winter coat has drip. And you know what? You are the CEO of winter coats. Oh, you get promoted. Yeah, on the, on the spot. If you are doing something well, or if you have something that is valuable or good or stylish, you're the CEO of that thing. Parents, we leave you with this disclosure. Now that you have the 411 and may be down with using these terms, careful. The kids may think you're sketch. I'm sure just me using these words now will make them all uncool instantly, and so they'll, they'll, it'll change automatically. But they're done. These, now, they've ex there's an expiration date on these words, and it's the moment it comes out of my mouth, or anybody over the age, I think of about 25.